What's up, guys? Welcome back to Shove It Podcast. Our first topic is gonna be: Should guys watch porn in a relationship? Ah, oh, there you go. There That's you go. a good one. That's more specific. Yeah. yeah. Everyone give their will give their one minute response. Communicating and just um, seeing seeing what each other likes, and then just one thing to take into consideration, or like not speaking for every person but some people it just creates like a false reality of what um sex or just like being with another person physically is like so that's just something that i think about stepmom and stepdaughter oh, no. hey yo sorry you said it you <laughs> said it you're, you know the genre, you're setting it. yourself I up right now know. bro as we speak warning we're warning you bro <laughs> Hey what? Hey what? Are you going on for real? Nah, nah, bro, nah. Bucks. He's uh, he talks about it so much. He's like on the nine hundredth page, <laughs> trying to find a new video. What do you uh? What do you mean though? Non consensual. Like the, uh, the production people. Like a lot. A lot of it is like non-consensual like you aren't communicating through the um through the video and then also a lot of them are underage in the videos so it's just a lot of bad shit going on i know i've heard of that especially in pornhub but i'm sure that's not the only thing the only website i, I, I only watch mills so i don't know uh, so you're mostly just talking about the industry of porn right like it's the a lot industry of, of like major companies. Okay, but do you guys have a, an opinion about you personally in a relationship if your significant other like watches porn or something like that? I've never mm-hmm. had a discussion with a girl about that. Never. No. If your girl had a problem with it, would you stop? I guess. Yeah. It's Out of respect for her, I guess. Mm, that's mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I guess yeah. That's that's makes sense. What about you, Juan? You seem like you wouldn't. Sometimes my. Uh, my significant other asked me like oh what do you watch you know uh-huh. and i just look at her i always every time she asked me that question i just look at her like oh we're like what the fuck is your problem you know <laughs> why the fuck do you care <laughs> <laughs> but but the truth is that like i just don't know what to say because i don't know how to tell her that i don't really watch that shit just say you don't watch yeah. it but like <laughs> but like I don't know. It's just weird because she says it like in a way where like she wants me to say something. How many times has she asked you that? It's just random. It honestly is just random and it's nothing serious. It's just more like a, that's just a weird ass question. But I just don't expect it. But it came up multiple times when she asked you that? Uh, randomly, yeah. Then why did you just tell her? Interesting. Yeah, I should probably just tell her. Huh? <laughs> and like I said, it's just not a serious conversation. It's just like a random ass question. And I just tell her like. Juan, I promise you. If she asks you that question, maybe things are going through her head and that's perfectly normal. But if you treat it like it's a normal thing and not like, oh, that that was kind of weird. Like, that was a random question. Like, treat it as if it's like, oh, she's just curious and she just wants an answer. Like, just give her the answer and that'll make her feel, like, more reassured. Like, just tre- treat it like it's normal. Like, don't treat it as if it's like, because the moment you give attention to it like that, that's when it becomes weird. That makes sense. I don't know. But, I mean, if my girlfriend was watching porn, it better be our videos. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that is. So my boy have letting you know that he got his own videos. Hey, you're liking. You can make money off that shit. Yeah. That's whatever. We can, we can all be doing that. Okay, but you already have videos and shit. Jose, you have videos? Hey, yo. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Ah. Spot. Why are you putting me on the spot <laughs> like that? Hey, host. Hey, 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 no. hey, 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 two parts to the to the question one was like in relationships right yeah and what was the other part just overall what are your thoughts on porn and what it does to like 
not the industry, but like more what does porn do to the the mind and to the, the mind of a dude and to the mind of a like a girl, for example. Well, think about it this way, bro. I feel like most guys when they start watching shit, they're like still developing. They're still like learning. They're still like going barely going through puberty. I when was your first time watching it? Eleven. I don't remember, I think I was early, like bro, 11 or and, 12. and you know what's funny? You probably even watched it earlier than that, but like fucking around with your oh, hey, hold on, hold on, like, fucking around with my DS. No, no, yeah. like with your friends, like <laughs> where where your friend has this happened to you guys in like elementary school? Because I have a vivid memory of like the first time someone was like, "Hey, look at my phone," and we were like in like sixth grade, fifth grade, and then and then I look and I'm like, "What the <laughs> fuck?" Someone's like on X videos or some <laughs> shit, and I'm like, like, like. I'm not gonna throw any names, but X and X X. Sure, and that's OG right there. And and then I'm just like a little ass kid, and I'm like, bro, what was that? Like that was the first time I've been exposed to it. And I'm like, the fact that there was like another like fifth or sixth grader that like knew about it already. It's yeah. like, and like, do you think they're gonna understand the shit they're seeing on there? Like, no. But then the cur- curiosity is there, and then they go home and they're like, what the fuck did I just see? Yeah. And they search it up, they find more and more, and. Uh, they and eventually they start, they start they feeling kind of weird. They start feeling weird. They find two girls, one cup, and they hey, to feel. that was just your <laughs> I, I experience, think, I, I think bro. I watched that before porn. What? <laughs> like stupid videos? Cup. The two girls, one cup. That's I what, watched that for sure before. That's a porn. crazy one to start with. <laughs> no, but it was like how he said. <laughs> my friend, <laughs> my friend just showed me. He was level. like, "Bro, look at this," <laughs> and I was like, "Bro, what the." Fuck, yeah. Why are they shitting and eating it, bro? You know what I think about when you said that? When you said, like, you know how people show you? Uh-huh. <laughs> Remember in high school? Hector? Oh, my God. He would always pull up the craziest oh, videos. Bro. Weirdest fucking videos. <laughs> craziest videos. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck did I just watch? It was from Na- Mexico. <laughs> like some narcos fucking <laughs> chopping off some food. Bro. You like, you know what? You know what? Oh hell no! I'd be like nah. Yeah, that's a different kind of friend showing you a video. <laughs> I seen uh, it's probably not a reliable source, but I seen like on Instagram, it say like how uh the reason why porn is so effective on like men, especially like young men, and it's because you know like young guys like let's admit it right here all like aren't guys attracted to visual stuff? Like, visual stimulation is what really gets to a guy. Well, guys are just visual learners, like, period. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is that, like, uh, the porn industry is, like, very effective against young men. And I think porn itself is, like, a big, big problem for young guys. Because instead of young guys trying to actually fuck those bitches that they see on porn, they're just sat- getting satisfied with the nut that comes with it. You know, they watch porn, they... F- they they're excited, whatever. They bust a nut and they give up. And they're like, ah, you know? They give up. <laughs> but instead, <laughs> like... Be ashamed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and instead, I feel like what a guy should be doing, <laughs> instead of wasting that testosterone on that nut that's going to end up in the fucking toilet on the fucking tissue, whatever, they should be trying to use that energy for, like, bettering themselves. Because, like, you know, testosterone helps with your muscles, your everything, you know, everything in the guy physical and instead of wasting that nut on that they should waste that energy that testosterone on trying to fuck those bitches in real life but I some people grow I'm out of that though yeah, as they mature how long has it taken us to grow out of it it's, it's taken some longer than others I think some people don't even grow out of it sorry the first couple times I I had sex I was hella trying to be like this was important you were what hella hella trying? Hella, yeah like whatever they did I was like I was hella trying to think of it you did like a hundred positions in two minutes. But then, like after after a couple times, like that, I I started like getting more comfortable with having sex. I like, thought, I like style. yeah, I like thought about it, and I was like, yeah. was really good though. And then with the girl too, like you just kind of like, you kind yeah, of like do like do, do like do what comes natural, especially like when you're actually having like a relationship. Doesn't matter what kind of relationship it is, but. Whenever you have a relationship with someone, like, you do things differently. The Amazon is very effective. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Throwing a fucking picture. Throwing a picture. Throwing a picture of the Amazon. <laughs> do you guys have any phobias? See. What are your phobias? Wait, what's the phobia? Just like an actual thing that's Yeah, pretty much. 
doesn't matter any any big small whatever you don't like you know how people have like i don't know what that phobia is called but it's like really small holes trypophobia i have that shit real bad like they're scared of like small holes and shit like a bunch of small holes is that what it is yes or it doesn't have to be i don't know it's just holes holes (laughs) (laughs) so So don't get them near a well so did you watch the movie or no <laughs> the title's kind of triggering, but it's fine. I have I have a a small phobia of something. What's your small phobia? I have I just learned that I think I have a a phobia, or I just talked to Emily about this, but of like big things. You're talking about like of uh, cruise ships or like uh, like industrial equipment or like. What about like if you're in a plane? Like, it, like, what if you're in a Boeing 747? If I'm next to it and the turbine is on, yes. But if I'm just chilling and it's just parked there, no. Nah. Like, I went to the, the dump with my, well, with Ozzy. And Ozzy's my, my boy. We work together. And uh, we went to go throw away some shit. And we went to the dump and there was a big ass, like, uh, industrial claw looking shit. And like to me, yeah, kind of like something like that. And it kind of like freaked me out. I had to get out and like, like press a button on some shit to like lower the trailer. And like just seeing that shit kind of like freaked me out. Cause I was like, dude, this shit is so big. And like, it's just like close to me. And I'm like, oh, oh. Over? yeah, or some shit like that. Hey. My phobias. It's like big bodies of water, but it's not the water that I'm scared of. It's what's inside, yes. you know, it's like, I don't care how deep it is, whatever. It's like big ocean, whatever, but I, I'm more scared of. Like what's swimming underneath of anything? It's fine. So like that, that's only when you're in water, though, right? Yeah. But what if what if you're like underwater and you can see what's in there, and like um, you see a fucking ginormous. You see a chick fil A in the pool. Like you see a ginormous fucking squid coming at you. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, it's swimming it's by you. No, no, like, no, 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 no. It does. It's not even by you. Like it's just. <laughs> I'll punch him in the. Face. If you ever encounter a shark, bro, they can't swim back. I'm just gonna swim behind him. <laughs> do do as you want with that information. Do I think I think that thing the thing is that they can't like swim like if you turn them upside down they fuck they can't like turn themselves over. Yeah. I think they just have to make a big ass so U turn. Like, you literally have to jump over each other. In the water. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Good water. luck. Or or just bleed. Just okay. cut yourself. Or just piss myself. Okay. Go go somewhere. Else. Wait, yeah, I think that's one of my phobias. Wait, Josie, so if you like were in a like in a plane crash or something and you crash in the ocean, would you freak out? Obviously the plane crash is scary, but like now you're in the ocean. I feel like I would at least try to swim around. I feel like I'd be calm and you're just floating inside, in the ocean. I'd be calm in the outside, but inside I'm freaking the fuck out. Like, and like I'm scared of like a I, shark. What if you're just floating and you're chilling and then you just like see a thing like Fuck that I'd be like I'd go under and punch it. What would be your last? What what would you think about? If I'm right there, if I'm being honest. What are you thinking or what are you saying? I'm thinking. I'm fighting till I'm I'm dropping, bro. (laughs) I'm thinking I'm going underwater trying to punch this motherfucker. I'll be like, ah. I'm probably going to die. My thought would be I'm winning. My thought would be grab something sharp and poke its eyes. Quick, get hard. Yeah, motherfucker, I'm half swordfish. <laughs> <laughs> this guy said, get hard. <laughs> I'm half <a> swordfish. <laughs> oh, the shark's like, hey, the shark's like, mm, shrimp. You want to see it? Bro, you're in freezing cold water in Antarctica, bro. You're Uncle <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? I'm half shrimp. Uh, anybody else got a phobia? Throwing up. Throwing up is your phobia? <laughs> yeah. Why are you scared of throwing up? Uh, no, when I was younger, I literally remember the exact day, like, it was this traumatizing. But I remember I got home, and it was New Year's Day, and I had a sleepover at my friend's house. And, like, me and my family were just, like, hanging out watching a movie. And this movie was about, like, these little kids, and there was this little boy, and then there was a girl who, like, bullied him a lot. And then they saw each other at the um, the carnival or whatever the fuck. Like, there's rides and shit. 
he was able to fuck with the ride and turn it up all the way. And Every single person on that ride was like violently getting sick on each other. And so I ended up crying and then I was traumatized the entire day. Do you think you're more scared of the sight? Like you're seeing somebody throw up or you personally throw up? Definitely somebody else. I don't have this phobia anymore. It's a weird ass phobia because it was straight up just self inflicted. So uh, I remember that when I was younger, like five years prior to when the phobia developed, I remember getting into like a minor, like little car crash with my mom, like two times in like the matter of like a year apart from each other. And then five years later, I suddenly like thought about it so fucking much that I started getting this phobia of just being in a car because I felt like I was just going to crash. I just thought like, oh shit, watch out mom. Like, you know, like everything was just like, they're trying to crash us. Yeah, hella paranoid. Hera, um, hella paranoid. Hera paranoid. <laughs> hella paranoid of just being in a car because I was just scared of being crashed. There, can't, there was a point where I would avoid being in a car in general. And I would tell my mom, I'm never going to drive. I'm going to have someone drive me in the future. I'm never going to drive because I was scared of being in a car crash. And over the course of time, I just... You know, I, I, I've had therapy before and stuff, not just because of that, but just I've always had therapy and stuff. And uh, they just told me, like, you just have to, sometimes you just have to do what you fucking hate or are scared of doing. And I did that, and it just disappeared. Just as it came in, it just went out like that. And it's very weird because, you know, I've never heard of, like, self-inflicted phobias. Yeah. I feel like phobias are usually something that you're kind of just naturally, like... I feel like that's, like, a trauma more than a phobia. Like, for me... I have no idea why I'm scared of big things. Well, I have, maybe, maybe. I have never had an incident where I have been traumatized by a. a I've never. I just like for some reason, I just feel like I can't ex- maybe it's something in the past life. Yeah, th- what I'm trying to say is like maybe it's you're consciously not aware of it, but maybe subconsciously, like you know, your subconscious remembers things when you were a fucking child that you you don't remember about right maybe now. Maybe I was like a baby and I saw something. Something like that of that nature, just, you know. Like, so maybe phobies are just like an extreme form of like PTSD. But I feel like one thing maybe that also got you over that was like the fact that when you drive, you're in control. Because when you're not in control, I feel like that's a different thing. Like you're like pressing on the fucking br- imaginary brake. You know what I mean? Oh, that's fucking true. I'm sorry, yeah. mom, but your driving scares me. <laughs> My mom's driving scares me. She'll be like going to the <laughs> correction. <laughs> you're like, damn, you texting? She's like locked in both hands on the steering wheel. Yes. You're like. <laughs> yeah, and then you, you're over here like, <laughs> and you're like perfectly in the lines. Sadie, what's uh your phobia? A phobia? I don't, I don't know if I have a phobia, but I just don't like <laughs> being said, stuck on the bridge. <laughs> you don't like being guess, stuck on a bridge. Time. Also, maybe heights. I mean, I bro, height. I get on roller coaster and shit. I don't. I'm not tripping. That's a little it. different, I think. But like, I. What I about just like don't, standing on the edge of like a like mountain? you know. On fucking um, a one on one, yeah. And you get from six eighty, oh, like to one on one, and there's like this one big ass bridge that so goes like, across. Yeah, I oh, remember. I remember. Yeah, we came back from a soccer yeah, like game from a school bus, <laughs> and bro, that fat ass school bus decided to fucking stand like right next to the fucking side, like on the left uh. side of the bridge, and that I literally. Look down, I couldn't even see the fucking side thing. Oh, damn. That, and then, like, bro, we were just tilted to the left. <laughs> and I was just... sitting on the left side. And it sucked. And I was just like, if this shit collapses, <laughs> it's over, bro. Hey, you're it's, turning it's it done to for. a fucking it's panini for. press. And you have any uh, phobias, Javi? I was scared. Of the, uh, I had a phobia of the turbulence, I guess. Maybe yeah. Oh yeah. Or like that feeling you get on a roller coaster, the same shit. But I got over it now. I recently just went on my first plane ride, so yeah. I basically did a hella research after, so I can like compare. And when you feel like that, like weird feeling in your stomach, it's because obviously, like, it's not that the plane is sinking. Like you know when you take off and it's kind of like whoa. Like it's not that it's sinking. It's that. Obviously, humans are not supposed to fly. Like, that's not what we were made for. So it's basically like extreme vertigo because you're going up in altitude and you're 
the little thing in between your ears, the little ball in between your ears is not supposed to be at that high. Mm -hmm. So you're literally just experiencing vertigo. All right, guys. So I asked phobias to see if you were in the top five phobias, uh, which none of you were. The top five phobias were fear of spiders, fear of snakes, fear of heights. A, a lot of like insects and animals. Yeah. Fear of situations where escape is difficult and fear of dogs. Michael B. Jordan. Oh, you saw what happened to him? Yeah, I heard. What? He was like at the game and like they showed him on the cam, uh -huh. the big ass screen, yeah, and there was like people laughing at him. Why? Because of what happened to him. Girl. Girl, yeah. Lauren, what happened to her? Yeah. She cheated on him? Or oh, like, oh, I mean, they just broke up or what? I think they just broke up. What What happened? Oh, that's it. The, that she wasn't committed, ready to commit to him or something like that. Right, after uh, what? Like, how many? Weren't they together for a while? Who? I searched it up because I was because I kept seeing right. seeing it on Twitter. Isn't she with the one with Future before that? She played Future too. Damn. She got Future too. She made Future, huh? Fuck no. She, that's that's fucking what's his name? Future was created. The S God Future Steve. with Future with Scotty Pippen's wife. Ah. Uh, did you know that just in the year 2022? There have been over 200 mass shootings. Uh, That's what is considered a mass shooting? Sourced by the Washington Post. But what what is the cate like what categorizes it as a mass like, shooting? Does it have to involve people dying or just people getting wounded or like does it just two people get killed and it's like mass shooting happens? Finds mass shootings as multiple firearm homicide incidents in, in, involving four or more victims at one or more locations close to one another. Yeah. So, so, well, so what about for, this? So what if like a gang starts like a shootout? They're that's a mass like, shooting. Unless it's like obvious gang violence. Related. Uh, the gang thing might be different if he gets like shot or something. Because well, at least uh, in this article it says mass shootings were mass shootings where four or more people, not including the shooter, are injured or killed. So they have averaged more than one per day so far this year. Yeah. Yeah. So if a gang member shoots four other gang members at a mall, that's a mass shooting. Yeah. But if it's like you're driving by, there's a drive by or some shit, then it's just like gang violence or some a shit like that. Yeah. Drive by. So to correct myself, it does say at the bottom in the article that there has been two, 240 mass shootings. This, I, that. Okay, I have one question. Just for in you the guys. U.S.? Uh, I believe so. I, th I believe this is just in the U.S. U.S. is pretty notorious. All you guys are born here, so I'm different than, than you guys. Okay. I was born in a country where, like, guns aren't being, like, you noses and are allowed to carry no nothing. Fucking people want to fight, fucking carry a machete. You know? <laughs> but, <laughs> that solves the problem. That's but definitely. Guns. Like, it, it, <laughs> like, you know, it just, saber fights. <laughs> with death, there's not a lot. Mostly are just from accident. But here, there's a lot of people die because of guns. Do you think if we would be like, take out all the guns, like no one will be allowed to use gun you know, anymore. You know, everyone would be yeah. safe. Or you, do I you think, guys think taking out the gun, we also will might cause other issue. It doesn't even, it's not going to change anything. Before you say anything, Mark, let me talk to, sorry about this, because I've been wanting to talk to you about this. I remember when the Texas shooting, happened uh just had happened i remember you posted like a post where it said all guns should just be banned to be honest yeah. and i was like and i i really wanted you to answer the question of does that really solve the issue because a lot of these guns being used in like mass shootings or actually i'm not sure maybe we should research that like are these guns being purchased legally or are they not being purchased legally? Because you think like a gang shootout, you think those motherfuckers went to Bass Pro Shop nah. to buy their rifle Fuck or no. their Glock, whatever. Nah. So like, what would the difference be of banning guns if they're just obtaining legally? You know, like think uh, about it like this. Okay, cocaine is illegal, drugs are illegal, but they're still gonna be passed around and used, right? So, so what's far, the difference with guns? so far, every shooting that has happened has been with someone that has had easy access to a legal gun. Yeah. But not every shooting. It, no, not every shooting, every but, but most, of exactly. the mass, most of the mass shooting. Exactly. Like, kids who are being shot, like, most of them grab the gun from their own family. They're I, not... The, 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 yeah. biggest, the biggest one that recently just happened in Texas, he was 18, so he was able to purchase 
in AR. So mm-hmm. yeah, honestly, um, so that so it was really and easy they, to and get. And what I've heard is that they don't they don't even do like a background. clean background check either. Like they just easy you right. could just easily purchase a gun over there. And that's one of the arguments that people are saying. Oh, like I can't buy alcohol until I'm 21, but I can buy a gun. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Honestly, I'm all about guns. You know, I feel like it's literally a fucking. It's in your constitution, like. It's, Constitution, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. literally one of the first things on there. It's like one of the most important things on there. What would solve the problem? Would I you, just think, would you rather have guns being outlawed temporarily to see what the effects are, or you can't do have that. like parents open carry to protect their children at school? Like, would that solve it? Like, teacher, I think like a teacher like being able to have like an AR. Like that's in the classroom. That's, that's the law like, in Texas. That's, that's like, literally Texas right now. The, the literally the governor was like, their their teachers are free to purchase gun and allow to carry them around the school. I <laughs> he think, literally <laughs> said in the news, dude, Texas is something else. Yeah. That's yeah. why something I was else. like, dude, I, like, aren't you surprised? Like, you bro, know, like, I'm all about what? guns. I'm all about owning your guns and stuff, you know, for whatever your reasons are, hunting or just for recreational shooting or, or per- personal or protection. Movement, yeah. However, I really, really don't get the point of someone getting like an AR, like an yeah. automatic assault rifle. I don't get the point of that. Like even for hunting, when people get like a lot of my family that I go hunt with, they like they hunt with ARs. But I feel like it's really like they having it, hunting with an AR. Because that kind of defeats the purpose. And, you know, like it's too easy. And like, bro, you're literally a dun, 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 dun. I've heard them like kill, like, like I've seen them like shoot animals. Not like, like anyway. I know a lot of people, they can purchase an AR, right? And here in California, you can't have no more than 10 bullets in the clip. You can't have no more than 10 bullets in the clip. However, all you got to do is take off one little pin and you can put 30 bullets in that bitch and you're good to go. However, when you buy the rifle, the AR, okay, you can only have 10 in here max. Did you also know Take that the clip with, 30. with an AR, they have the little lock on the reload mechanism? So you are not like allowed to quickly reload and put in another mag. Oh, yeah, you have to, like, you have to put in a key, and then the key goes inside of the little button, <laughs> and then that's the way you release the, the mag. But, they, but, but then they sell things. Yeah. Also, I've seen it where it's literally like you just replace the little thing. You pop it out and you just put a regular button and you don't need the key anymore. Which of course, if like a if like a ranger or whatever, like if you're trying to hunt mm-hmm. or whatever, yeah. they see that. Yeah, that's a you're fine. Like, you're but no, that's jail. That like, you're busted. Yeah. However, like it's so easy to hide it. Or like, it's not like they're really gonna like check your. Like, or that's where the problem happens. Where like if someone wants to buy that for bad reason, it's so easy to buy like a little piece to make your gun that much more dangerous. Like it's a five dollar piece or whatever, and now your gun is a weapon. Like, I think they should just revisit the laws that they have. Yeah. Like, and like as a country now, like every yeah. state has to follow these laws, dude. But it's They're, a lot hard because, like I said, it's literally a constitutional right. Like, I no, get, no, no. But, but I'm not saying you shouldn't like be allowed to buy them. But I think, I think everywhere, yeah. everywhere, like every state should be at at least twenty one, and then you can't buy more than a certain amount of. And at the same time, you need to provide your license. Yeah, I think they should do like that. All, but like, they kind of do that shit. I but mean, they like, don't. But they do that Texas? here. They do that yeah, here. In They're Texas? strict here. Well, what's 18. the difference? He bought like 150 bullets. Hear, if I wanted to here in the U.S., something like that. If I wanted to, I mean, not in the U.S. If I wanted to here in Cali, I can go to Bass Pro Shop, buy an AR, and buy five boxes of ammo a day. But that's, that's and it's Cali. <laughs> Cali is strict. You know, they okay, but you're not shooting someone. Are you right? No, but like I'm pretty sure when they sell you. No, but that's what I'm saying. He was like that guy. If we're talking about just Texas, who was 18, maybe he would not done that when he was 21. And I think they just go to a store. You don't even have to show like ID or anything. You can just go to the store and purchase a gun. Yeah. You don't need to show any. So the thing is that um, people who are licensed to sell guns, they do some like do require background checks and everything. But these kids are going to gun shows where they're unlicensed and they can do it under the table. Oh, that's true. So they don't have to like oh, run background stupid. checks. You just pay cash. I literally right saw here. a video on it where like this one kid, ex- he's 18 years old. He lived doing a, an experiment, social experiment. And he went into the gun show and he literally came out with a fucking like 
blindfold. With like a yeah. zip tie through it or something. And then I'll, he was like, yeah, he's like, oh, let me buy it. And he was like, all right, let me I, get this. Let me get it done for you. And I know, he I know he, that. He went out with a gun. I was like, dude, So what? I think the issue is in, in the, in the, the system. gun shows. Yeah. And like these that? things that they don't require the background checks. They don't require like a license to sell with the guns. But in a way, wouldn't you say that it's kind of like, not necessarily like black market type of stuff, but it is kind of like under the table. That's yeah, illegal. that's illegal. Yeah, it's a it's illegal. I've gone to a gun show like here in like San Francisco with my dad, like at the Cow Palace, and I've seen people like walk around with like a, I don't know, like at the time I thought it was like a musket or something, but it was probably like an old thirty thirty or something like that, and they're just walking around like carrying it like if it, if they were like in Texas, like nothing, and I'm just like, bro, like to me that was just crazy to see that like. To see someone walking around with a rifle but i'm like i know when they walk out they have to get it checked there's like police at the door and everything but i'm like i wonder how it is in other states sometimes yeah. it is helpful like open carry like it can be helpful like somebody tries to fucking pull a shank on you fucking pop them like two times and then you're good but like there's cases like this where it's like that's why the whole topic is kind of like all over the place like you don't really know what's right and what's wrong I feel like every time, like, you think of a solution, there's always, like, something attached to it. Like, unfortunately, and not that this is going to stop at us or anybody, but I just feel like we're so deep into the problem to where, obviously, people just care about it during the time that it happened, and then after, it's just kind of like, whatever. And I feel like nothing's ever going to really get done about it because, like, it, like I said, it's just kind of like everything else, even just other things, too. Like uh, like the Johnny Depp thing. Like, people are going to pay so much attention to it, blah, blah, blah. It's so crazy, whatever. And then, like, in the next two months, everybody's Social media kind of finds a new thing to completely forget about yeah. it. And unfortunately, that's just the way it is. So it's just like, obviously, I hate all of this. And it literally pisses me off, especially because now I work at a school. And I work at a school with fucking kids with special needs who really cannot help themselves like i literally don't know how i would fucking hide them so yeah it really pisses me the fuck off and it gets me really scared and i think about my kids but genuinely like i really don't know what the solution is carry a clock with you now no, let me ask you this sir do you think if we banned if we try to ban all weapons do you think that would be the answer it's not a like a perfect way to have a solution to this, but it's definitely help of reducing the gun violence. Instead of everyone fucking are able to carry a gun walking around. If it, it's like saying, okay, allow school to carry a knife, would you wouldn't you fucking be like, nah, like people who are carrying knife are more are illegal. So like you just have one or two knife instead of fucking everyone has a knife, you know? So like Having a gun ban reduce the guns to help the reduce the gun violence. It's, it's just not like to solve like everyone will stop shooting each other. Of course it won't be because there's gonna be people who fucking walking around with illegal guns where they we don't know where they get them from. You're just saying to lower the statistic. Yeah. You know like, what I think? Wouldn't it be like we just do anything at this point to help reducing it? We're not trying to solve the whole thing. At this at this point we just need something. Yeah, at, like it's I literally don't... anything at this point because we're literally not fucking doing anything mm -hmm. and Canada is doing a bunch of shit and it's like they don't even have that big of a problem. Bro, or it's I, not that hard. Or I think about like, bro, literally like England. Yeah. England's got a knife problem, but bro, Which I know rather have? America yeah. would rather have a knife problem than a fucking gun problem any goddamn day. I'd rather get shot than ching. Mm -hmm. Wait. Yeah. Someone shanks me, spills my guts. Yeah, it's kind of it's like, kind of painful. You're like yeah. walking with a knife. Like, uh, uh, at least if I get like, shot, bro, I might what are have the a chance. chance of you being survived? All right, you all right. Know, listen. Yeah. Honestly, you get stabbed in your back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. For real, True. though, that is for real. And it's like, what the and fuck and I think it's about? more appropriate any day of the year to carry a knife with you than it is to carry a gun with you. Like. Yeah, honestly, that would be some people love their guns, bro. That's yeah. the problem with our country is that we, we love our guns. I was going to say that because you were saying, like, take away everybody's guns. But I feel like that will just cause a bigger problem. Nobody's going to want to give up, like, give up their gun. Yeah, people are yeah. for the police. <laughs> oh, okay. Chill out, bro. The police are going to go around with shanks and machetes. <laughs> hey, Tomahawks. Come, come here, lad. 
Hey, hey, Scallywag, come here. I don't think that's... Run in my pockets. <laughs> Changing. <laughs> hey, you, you're like, hey, you know how here, how here you're sleeping in bed and you're like, bah, bah, bah. Outside, over here, you're, <laughs> you're like, damn, someone's getting. In the, the the <laughs> in, in the name the of the queen. In the name of, in the, in the name of Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> Run in thy pockets, you scallywag. <laughs> okay, well, I was saying like, yeah. Gun stuff, okay, man. so you were saying like to take away guns, but. I don't think that's a... You need to give up your sniper right now. <laughs> give it up. It's... They'll refund you, though. <laughs> no refund. I don't think there's any solution uh, I got something to, say about that. to the problem. It's a, yeah, it's, it's but there is, like, things way. that they can... Do better to play. Do better, yeah. which... Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Which is... And they have said it to, um... I don't know, what is it? The senators, whatever. Like, the higher-ups who actually take control of that shit. They've given them, like, oh, like, um... Uh, Better gun laws where they don't have to take away the fucking guns, but like more restrictions where like background checks and like you have to be like 21 or to like 25. And, 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 and that's what I said, just revisit the laws. See, and what does that take away from like being an American? If anything, it's like, I know, but I'm saying like, like what is so bad about an extra fucking law to, or an extra step that you have to do in the process to get your gun? You're still going to get your fucking gun if you, if you know you're doing everything right, stop tripping. I, I feel like nowadays like people associate gun with automatic like violence when it's like i bet well, you bro, there's the so many things but are look, right now hold up look it there's so many fucking trouble. there's so many fucking people that have guns and they're perfectly fine but one two three four five fucking maniacs go bro, crazy how many people it. how many people have guns in germany bro i'm sure in germany every single person at every house has a gun how many school shootings do you hear? None. And that's the thing. That's what I'm trying to... I think they should do like a mental, like, to see where that mentally... Cause I like, the, I like, like a little the guy in Texas test before they well, even I get to... There was to... a lot of stories about the guy in Texas that, like, people were saying that you could notice that he was, like, kind of, like, depressed or, like, going through something, you know? Therapy, love it, love all that shit. But it literally fucking pisses me off when people start talking about mental health with these fucking crazy people. Like, literally, like... So you have mental health issues, okay, that's, your feelings are valid, whatever, but, like, you're gonna shoot 19 plus people, like, it's just, like, children. I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, like, yeah, what will you consider that? I don't think it's that at that point. I think it's just, like, the constant, you could just go back to social media and constantly getting, like, um, attention for it, and obviously it could be mental health, too. I'm not saying it's that, and I'm not unvalidating anybody but i'm just saying like it's just like it, it, it literally it doesn't make the situation better those, so, those kids are still fucking gone no. the teacher is still fucking gone like it doesn't matter like those kids should have gone home that day like i don't give a fuck about his mental health like yeah, it's okay. literally it's just like everything as a whole like it's just social media and all that like giving hella attention and then not doing shit about it yeah like we we it's can't like, do we can't do anything that they're dead that those kids are dead. Yeah, we can't do anything, but we can try to prevent the future. For sure. Like so, I'm, so you think that kid is was normal? Was a normal kid? The one no, that no, killed, no. I'm, I'm saying that he wasn't I'm, going through I'm something. I'm almost positive he was going through shit. Like I totally. And get that comes out to help then. No, but I'm just saying, like, when you hear that stuff happening, like, I really don't give a shit and a half about him. I don't care. He doesn't deserve like attention. Like, it's. It's just no one's like, giving him attention. I think they both are like it doesn't because he it doesn't did matter. something that it like changed the lives of a lot of people. But that's the problem. That's why we're giving him that's, attention. That's the problem. The problem is that we're us and the media. But we're not giving him a good attention. No, though. It's, it's like we're. I understand, him, but we're not making him famous. Have you heard of like, Have you heard of lives. any publicity is good publicity? I feel like a crazy person. The thing that they're craving the most is attention, and they don't give a fuck well, you, mentally. We have to do that as a as a country. We have to let people know what happened. Who no, did, you know? but that there's nothing wrong with that. But it's the way that they do things. It's like when someone's a murderer, they call them a cool name, like the Night Stalker or some so, shit. Yeah. Or the, and it's like, why are we doing that? Why are we making? I've never it? heard that. I think the way that they're going is that there have been some instances where people see that. They're mass shooting and they get attention and then they do it because they're like, oh, it's going to give me attention. They have mental health issues. They want attention.
attention in some sort of way. So they feel like the world doesn't hear their cries, and they feel like they're just this little insect in the universe if, or whatever. So you think if someone does that, we shouldn't tell people about it? That's I don't feel like we shouldn't tell people about it. I feel like if something like that has has happened or is going to happen or is happening, we should like address the problem that caused that to happen. Not not the kid, not his There's name. If if it has to be with the uh, But name. my point is like why are you tripping so much of what people are saying people about him? Like yeah, they say his name, like they're saying who he was, his family, you know. But they're not saying him like like that. They're like focusing only on that. They're all, all they're obviously saying like that he was going through stuff that he like really wasn't we're there. We're talking about a general shooting. We're not just talking about if we talk No, but my point is him, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know what yeah, you guys are talking yeah. about. I know what you guys are talking about. But my point is like so but how are we not going to say who he was? No, that, that's not what I'm saying cuz well, what I'm trying to say is like when you're on the news, I don't know if you've watched the news or heard the news about this when it happened. The thing the thing that they first report is always how many died. The first thing you hear is how many kids died at where. And then afterwards, the next spiciest detail is, who's the kid? Then the next spiciest detail is, why did he do it? Let's hear a little bit about him. Let's hear about the people he's talked to. Let's hear about the messages he sent. Let's hear about the things he... Why the fuck do we care so much about him? Who the fuck cares? He was a stupid, crazy-ass little fucking whatever. That's it. Leave it there. But don't lie if you have... Don't lie if you have seen that, because I know you've seen it. You're like... Look at the pictures he's posted before. Look at the messages he sent. It's like because they're trying to dissect what the problem was. But you know? there, there's no need for that. He's yes, a fucking crazy to, guy. Because you have to kind of try to figure out the problem. Do you really need convincing more than the nineteen no, no, no. kids there's, that died? There's obviously he's crazy, but there's trying. To, then you can say yeah he's crazy, but you can't finish it there. Then you got to take it one step further. Like why is he like that? Like you can't just hide from those yeah, those honestly, questions. Like that I Nicholas Cruz guessing. kid. The same shit. What were we trying to he wanted to be famous and he wanted people to know his name. Yeah, and he got everyone to Who see else? the uh, Columbine shooters. Same shit. To try to this that. started off with guns being the problem, but obviously the guns are not the problem. The mass, we're focused on the mass shooting. Guns are not the problem in the mass shootings. The problem is that mm-hmm. there's a lot of people who just want attention. Mm-hmm. People who are just not right here and they don't have that type of support they need. So obviously the problem is more centered towards mental health to begin. And media is just trying to get the most feed out there so they can get the most views and stuff. So maybe the problem or the solution to this problem wouldn't necessarily be banning guns. I'm going directly at sorry there. The problem is not the guns. I think the problem is that there's not enough like checks. And I think a good solution is having constant checks on people who purchase weapons to like really check on how are they in the brain mentally yeah to and are they adequate and rightful enough to like really own a weapon that that comes back to the point I was trying to make to up the laws to make yeah. them those set health checks mandatory you got to have a certain <laughs> age you got to be any rules bro just change yeah. some of the rules yeah. cuz I, I mean, know you can be exper- made, experiment you can with have, it like, you can't go you can but even have, like, references saying, and stuff, you know? Like, someone who knows me, for example, if I want to purchase a gun, I can be like, okay, here's a, here's my professor. He knows me as a responsible person. That, stuff. too, yeah. Like, reference checks and shit like that. Just having a more clear picture of what type of gun you own and who the fuck are you. That's what I'm trying to say, though. We won't, like, ban them. Yeah. But at least make it 21 so they're, like, a little bit more there in the head, you know? Yeah. yeah. But that's, most but- of the shootings that have happened have been... The only shooting I remember like that... And it was kind of an older person. Vegas. Was was the movie theaters and Vegas? Oh yeah, the Batman. Yeah, the Batman movie. I remember that one hella. Yeah, Which the one? Vegas. And what about like the what about the one at VTA? Wasn't that some? Old yeah, guy that too? was an older guy. Wait, too. why why did the one in Batman shoot him? Up? What I've heard from the sources was that the shooter was influenced by the movie, so he was acting as some. Like a villain, I don't know. As a joker, I think. Yeah, yeah, that shit's scary. So he went into the movie theater, the room, while the movie is playing, he starts shooting at people. Yeah. Like, Batman. Batman. So, uh, nah. no, no, no. This was like years ago. ago. It was like like twenty, Probably like Dark Knight Rise or something. Yeah, that it was like, a long time. ago. I think ago. we just need a bigger. Yeah. Im- we just need a bigger improvement in like mental health because that's all it is. It's like because. If you're like not mentally strong, 
like that, like you can easily be influenced by like a Batman movie and just start. But that's yeah. what that's yeah. what that's what I'm kind of saying is that every every quote unquote solution that we're thinking of, there's always something attached to it because, as someone who goes to therapy, it is probably like the least like available thing. I literally go maybe once a month, if that. Like my therapist literally told me. Oh, yeah, also, I'm not going to be here all of August. So we're going to have to wait two months to see you. And it's like, and then when you talk to your therapist, it's like that maybe you had an anxiety attack like two weeks ago and you have to wait two weeks to talk about it. It's like there's so much shit that's wrong. And you're, you're, and you're, like, like a lot of people. And you're a person, you were and I'm, the other person. Yeah, like I'm thankful that I'm able to wait and I'm able to do what I need to do and maybe help myself when I'm not able to talk to my therapist. But there's yeah. some people that aren't and then they're, they're not. On drugs. And they're, like it's just it's so bandages. much shit you can't you can't like a lot of facts factors that come to it. That's fucking sad because like it's true. Like even for me, I I just recently had like my first few like therapist appointments or whatever, and I've never had therapy before. But I did it because I was like I feel like everyone should go to therapy, and and I I talked to someone and it wasn't fucking easy to get an appointment. I uh, had to wait like two Mark. months. Were you influenced to get therapy by the Shove It podcast episode we had a couple of days ago? Oh, <laughs> Which one? Wait, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like you said in the episode, um, everyone should get therapy because it's just it's good to talk to other people, even if you don't feel like you need it. Because I don't feel like I need it all the time, but sometimes I do feel like I need to talk to someone, someone else. It was hard for me to get fucking therapy, like to think that even for me, like I have technically free health care because I'm like um, – under the certain limit or whatever for money um and even for me to get someone to help me like to talk to me it took me like two fucking months and i'm like bro, in two months if i was a crazy ass motherfucker i would have done crazy shit already it's two fucking months and i'm in california in the silicon valley i'm young i'm put together i'm i'm not that fucking crazy i'm like and it took me two months to get a fucking appointment You're not crazy at all. imagine a crazy motherfucker who doesn't want help and he's like, oh, God, give me a sign. Give, I'm going to call this number right now. And if they can't get me help right now, I don't give a fuck anymore. How are they going to answer you, bro? You know how backed up like therapy and like how many people are asking for help? It's like the problem is that there needs to be you know, available therapy for everybody. I really wonder why, though. Why is it that USA is like the country with the fucked up people? You know? It's just got the most fucked up systems and everything. We're too free. I don't, we're too have, divided. Yeah, I think the problem really out. is, though, like, just a, our leaders, bro. This country does not have leaders. Like, I, I've said it in podcasts bro, before. Bro, you know who leads this country with larger influence? Whoever has a dope. Elon Musk. Mark Zuckerberg. Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. And I remember, I remember hearing, like, like, I always say this on our podcast, and I always mention it to you guys, but, like, like they used to be presidents, like Teddy fucking Roosevelt. <laughs> there's like, there's like Franklin Delano Roosevelt, like JFK, JFK. There's these motherfuckers who really, really like thought Influence. about who had who had the the grasp of like the Americans. They literally wanted the better of every like just this country. All right, I think it's time to end it. All right, thanks. Guys All right, for thank listening. you, Shovet podcast viewers. Have a good one. Have a good one. Like and subscribe. Check out our Spotify for um, listeners only. Live life and vibe.